All right, Pina Gallery, let's do some heckling. All right, so um, I've, I've touched on this topic a couple of times, but it's becoming very common um, where you have, uh, I guess, individuals, wrestlers who are in partnerships with, who are in a promotion that has partnerships with other promotions. And sometimes these individuals go for a title and win a title. Um, and I have very mixed feelings about this just in general. And I'm going to go through some pros and cons with regards to the, the merit of doing this. Because I think that there are pros and that I, there are certainly cons with it as well. Yep. Um, obviously, the reason and, and what I'm referring to is P, are people who are signed with one company who go to other companies that, and then they win the titles – and then they keep those titles for a while, and sometimes they win multiple titles just in different companies. And I'm going to first talk about the pros. The pros, obviously, you have the exposure angle. Yep. And I think that that is extremely important, especially when it comes to uh, promotions like AAA. AAA is very well known for these cross-promotional titles mm -hmm. because they're trying to reach a certain audience that otherwise would not know right that, that is that, promotion that is all. that is the biggest reason why they do this yes. um especially even back in the day with ultimo dragon winning a bunch of titles mm -hmm. i mean he had a collection of 20 different championships he was draped in gold number one it looks visually cool yeah and also when a person is popular enough and they get them, why wouldn't you put it on somebody who right. gets eyeballs on the product? That's right. the entire business model of this. You want people to watch. Right. Um, and so that's that's kind of the primary reason, I think. And and I think a good secondary reason, too, is that then the title also feels more important because more people, people are getting the attention from outside the promotion. Right. Um, they want to go in and they want to see what it's all about and they want to win the title. That's why I love AEW and cross-promoting like the Ring of Honor titles. It's mm -hmm. keeping that fresh on a well, much larger level. Right. Ring of Honor is essentially a puppet of AEW. Well, yeah, but um, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's like when NXT went to WWE when they had the NXT champion on the line there. Right. It was exposing people to a product that they may or may not necessarily, you know, have, have heard seen of. before. Right. It could be good or bad, but there you right. go. And I think it's good for the companies in terms of being able to put the title on someone without pay, you know, like, like, and, and paying them a little bit differently. Rather, you know, like, it's another, they're under contract with another company. Right. And they don't have to foot bills for things that maybe they... Right. can't afford. I think I think overall the whole thing about title collectors is a mutually beneficial thing mm -hmm. um, just all the way around. Um, but if you want to move on to a second, I mean, the, essentially all I have are pictures of people with multiple titles. But um, let's talk about some of the cons with this as well because I think that there are some cons. And I think the first okay. the first con is that uh, when, when you would defend a title at another promotion's pay-per-view, you... I, I guess I guess it, it kind of feels out of place, so to speak. Um, it doesn't make it, it puts it, it puts emphasis on a product that is not of the home brand, and I think that that can be de detrimental, especially in the case where you already have a title. Um, you know, like 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 for example, the the women's the women's champion, the uh, the Rene Reina's champion, being defended at Impact Rebellion. Um, I think what it did is that it took away a spot that someone else could have occupied. If it was on a regular show, I probably would have been more accepting to it because now I understand what you're saying because this is a pay-per-view. Yeah. And with a company like Impact Wrestling that does a limited amount of pay-per-view time mm -hmm. because they don't have pay-per-views every month – this I could see this rubbing people the wrong mm -hmm. way. I, and I think the other thing that I want to mention, too, is that if you have the title on someone from a different promotion, it kind of implies that the people that you have already signed aren't good enough for that title. I think that it really gives off that vibe as well. I could see that. Um, now, some promotions almost strictly 
do outside um, outside signings like Austin Aries. Yeah. Like um, there are people that will be that will book like multiple dates with a promotion, but they don't necessarily or they're not necessarily signed to with a the promotion. Company. Um, and you know, I think that it would rub people the wrong way too if they saw, oh, this person is is our champion, but this person can't be seen. You know, this person is kind of signed with a different company. Great segue. Yeah, great segue for you have, Kenny you have Omega. The, you, have, you have the world champion. Yeah, with Kenny Omega. He held the mega champion for a long-ass time. Yep. And it, it seemed like the, the mega champion, number one, the mega champion was on someone who was in a different country. Yep. Someone who was above and beyond any of the wrestlers that they could have possibly built. And you just didn't have anyone really viable in triple a as a result because it just seemed like oh here's kenny omega and he's just like this mega star and then everyone else is like oh i will say one thing in contrast of that is when he does lose to somebody mm. if if he faced like elio del vikingo for instance our current champion i think that would have elevated vikingo up even right more. to that mega star but he really he didn't have the opportunity to do so given the circumstances of yeah. you know the pandemic and then also um kenny omega relinquished mm -hmm. the title because he was hurt and i think it, i think what we're seeing now is we're kind of seeing these titles revert back to their original promotions i think um, and I can, I can still see those partnerships existing, but really a lot of the titles that you see now are a lot of the titles are back with people who are actually signed to the promotion. Which I, I they will, are a part of, I will say one thing in that, I mean, right now, because like, you know, Kenny Omega got hurt. Well, right. he was hurt. He was had a couple of injuries, but I think the pandemic was a big factor in having these belt collectors mm -hmm. because you have a huge crutch with nobody in the stands. With, with right with people with people who are so you have to get more eyes on your television screens and, and, and when your and rosters somebody, might be limited if you're an international promotion. Right. And, and if somebody's like a mega champion like Kenny Omega was back then, that gets people to watch that pay per view right. more. And you're right, they're they're starting to revert back to we have the roster now we have the people. And people respond to this better. Let's right. keep this because, like you said, somebody could get hurt. You have to relinquish mm -hmm. the title. You have no control over that. Right. You have no control over that person's dates. You have no control. Kenny over Omega was wrestling everywhere. Right. And he was getting hurt. And he was getting more hurt and more hurt and more hurt. Right. And it's like, okay, well, there has to be a breaking point at some time. Right. Um, and so that's those are some of the biggest cons that I see with, with these belt collector types. I mean, overall, I think I don't think it's a bad idea, um, but there definitely are bits and pieces of it where you can say, yeah, I can see how it affects maybe the morale of the locker room, for example, without having that that base of the company there. Right. Um, you know, uh, not having as much control as you might have, would have liked for these titles in the first place, you know, you don't have that control over the, the trajectory of these titles, the dates that they're available and that sort of thing. Right. Um, you know, and Bell Collector has been around even since before the pandemic. Yeah. And, like and I think that they're going to continue, but I mean, I just, I guess it might be just a word of warning for promotions. Don't get too dependent on, on these, these outside outsiders essentially coming in and having your titles. Cause it could seem like that your title would be held hostage by, by maybe even another promotion. Austin Aries did that mm -hmm. when he was a belt collector, he held the world title hostage mm -hmm. in a way. Um, I think with Matt Cardona, because I think this is a great thing. And I really wanted to talk mm -hmm. about this with your topic. I was really excited because Matt Cardona almost transcends promotions. Yeah, he does. Because he has made such a huge impact overall. And I think Kenny Omega is another great example of that, where he is almost above mm -hmm. um, that thing. But and he's still signed with Impact, and he's now holding the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. But, so. he, also, but he also has like three other yeah. um, headline titles. Yes. Now, with Cardona, they are very limited on him wrestling in a full-time capacity. Yes. Um, they're doing him for maybe marquee matches right. if there was like a big pop because they had him uh, defend that digital media champion against uh, Guido Meritado yeah. from ECW, which once again, marquee match. Right. 
it, they were in 2300 arena and they had to do it um and with cardona being the nwa world heavyweight champion and maybe not being the world champion all the way across the board right it's actually bringing up the digital media champion right it's giving it more legitimacy right. i think overall um so it, depending on what you do with the belt collector gimmick is where it is but you gotta be careful yes we've you do. seen we've seen it successful and we've seen it very unsuccessful or, 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 to, think, or to the detriment, I think Kenny Omega's thing overall was a detriment to his health. Yeah, and it was Not, also, it also in my opinion, him him holding the title as long as it did was a detriment to even even just uh, AAA's mm -hmm. brand. I think they had to rebuild that heavyweight division because well, they did the mega well, division. Because, well, they, they, they didn't. They did not know that there was going to be a fucking pandemic. Well, I know, but he held it for like three hundred days before then too. <laughs> well, that's but that but that's the thing though, and we're going to be talking about that on my segment. Is oh, that really? that is that is a standard yeah. for um, Triple A or actually Mexican championships as a whole. They always have longer reigns. Yeah, always have. So longer speaking reigns. of which, I'm pretty much done with my topic. All right. Um, but why don't we transition into yours after the break? Yeah, absolutely.